Coming up on Hope Alive with Reverend S.C. Matebula. If you have not received our calendar, immediately after the service you can get one. And then because it has the theme of the year, devoted life, which is what we, we're going to talk about, you know, for the month, not for the month, for the year of 2020, you know, fully devoted or devoted life, we're just going to talk about that. You know, but in that calendar as well, we've got what we call, you know, themes of every month. You know, you'd realize that our theme for January is create, okay, create. And then when you look at the definition of the word to create, it simply means to bring something into existence, to cause something to happen or exist. That is what we, we, we're going to talk about, to cause something to come alive. I, I, I just felt that the Lord wanted us to challenge, you know, the church of Jesus in the area of creating things to bring, you know, something, you know, to, to, to life. You know, sometimes we, we expect things to happen in our lives, but we don't contribute in those things so that they can happen in our lives. And while I'm on that one, I also want to recommend three books. I have not started with my, my message, but these are the books I want to recommend to you as we start with January. And these are the books you may read for U January. And if you've got the copies of this book, I will encourage you once again, read them. The first copy of the book I want to recommend for you, it is a book by Umar Humet, you know, Ben Rashid, uh, uh, the, the Prince of, of Dubai. It's a new book that he wrote. He's telling us how they've created, you know, or they've built in Dubai. Let me tell you, a good copy, you know, for, for your library. Let me tell you, these guys, they were under oppression of the British for 150 years. And then just last year, December, they were celebrating 50 years of independence. So Dubai is actually 50 years old, but you look at what they've achieved for themselves, what they've created in that nation. It is amazing. He gives you all the secrets. He gives you all the secrets. And let me tell you, prayer and fasting, it is not one of them. I was just saying, they've just used their hands and their wisdom to create that nation. I'm going somewhere with that. And there's a second book I want to recommend to you by Sunday Adilaja. Sunday Adilaja wrote a beautiful book. It's called How Every African Nation Can Become a First World Nation. A brilliant book to read. He says the biggest mistake we have done in Africa, he says we have built more churches than factories. Specifically, he, 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 he mentioned in Nigeria because he's a Nigerian. He says it is amazing that in Nigeria you've got thousands and thousands of churches and thousands and millions of people are going to church, but corruption is on top. And there is no development. It is because people are hiding in a church and they are not even using their hands to create the future for their children. A good book to read that has transformed my life in December. I am a born again Christian today, Bazalwan. <laughs> and the last one that I want to recommend to you, it is a book by Chika Anyoni, and then the, name, the title of the book, Capitalist Nigger. I was reading this one for the second time. A beautiful book to read. And in chapter 7, he talks about miseducated Africans. He says, the other thing that makes us not to create Africa for the betterment of our next generation is that most Africans have been miseducated. And when I was reading that, I cried tears because I remember while I was at school, they taught me how to master the parts of a grasshopper. How many of you have done that? That was miseducation. While I mastered the, the parts of a grasshopper, they gave us the lizards. They said, now you need to master the parts of a lizard. In Sizangani, lizard manje. In Sizangani, grasshopper manje. In Sizangani. He also touches the engineers. He talks to the engineers in that book. He says, you call yourself an engineer. What is it that you have engineered in life? Because what they've done to you, 
They've taught you how to monitor the systems. You are not an engineer. You are just monitoring what has been cre created. You are a technician, miseducated. And in the month of January, we're going to talk about create. Going to challenge your thinking. Going to challenge your spirit. Going to challenge your mind and your spirit. Allow me this morning to talk to you under this topic, create your future or creating your own future. Creating your own future. You would agree with me that this morning, all of us, we desire a better future for ourselves. It is a fact. And if you look around the world today, many Christians are gathering in churches just like us to listen to a preacher talking to them about a New Year's blessings or a future blessing. Am I right, Barcelona? This is what is happening across Africa even this morning. But listen to this, Barcelona. Unfortunately, not many will be telling the people, these preachers, what their responsibility is in creating the future they want. Listen to this statement. The future is not something we enter into. It is something we create. I want that just to ring a bell in your spirit. The future, it is not something we enter into. It is something we create. Listen to me, Hope Restoration Ministries. Even those of you who have come to this church because you want to make some resolutions. There is no tablet that will give you prosperity. There's no medicine that will take you to the better future. You will never stumble into your future. The future is not something you enter into. It is something that you create. Listen to me. My life took a giant leap forward 20 years ago when I got the revelation of this. That your future is not a miracle or a mystery. It is a harvest of choices you make today. Oh my goodness me. Can I read that again, Mazalwan? Your future, it is not a miracle or a mystery. It is a harvest of choices you make when, Mazalwan? Today. So if you make right choices today, let me tell you, you're going to harvest a bright future. You're going to harvest a better future. Can I make this statement to African people, even those who are watching on television? Uguti, there is no oil that will give you a better future. There is no water that will give you a better future. There is no prophet that will ever give you a better future. There is no resident that will ever give you a better future. There is no sticker that you put on your car that will ever give you a better future. There is no picture in your house. No picture of Matebula. No picture of a bishop. No picture of a prophet will ever give you a better future. The future you created with your own hands. Listen to me, Africa. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. I told you I just got saved. Got saved. I had to take some of the, the material from my library, throw them away. You look at those books, there's not even a single American in those books. Nothing wrong because we have never embraced African people in our library. We have never embraced, you know, Arabs in our libraries. Just got saved. Just got a revelation in the name of Jesus. If we really want to create a better future, we need to become real and speak the truth to our brothers and sisters. Listen to what others are saying about the future before I give you the scripture. This is what others are saying about your future. Elena Joy says, your past never defines your future. I love that. Your past never defines your future. And then that is the hope for an African child right there. It doesn't matter your past, what happened in your past. But here is the first truth, is that your past never defined what, Bazalwane? Your future. And then the person by the name of Samid Soda says, the past, it is in your head. The future, it is in your hand. 
Did you hear that, Pastor Luan? He says, the past, it is in your head. But the future, it is in your hand. Look at the person next to you and say, your past is in your head. But the future is in your hand. Do you want a bright future? Do you want a success? Do you want a better life? Listen to me, child of God. It is right in your hand. You can create that with God on your side. You can create a better future. And I am here to declare that as you begin 2020, it doesn't matter what has happened in 2018, 2019, but the future, it is in your hand. Hallelujah. Listen to this one. Listen to this one. And then it is by Robert, you know, Kayusaki. Robert Kayusaki. He says, your future is created by what you do today, not tomorrow. I love that. And then here is another one. This person says, you cannot blame anyone for the life you have, good or bad, because you created it by your choices. We don't want those truths. Most of the time, we don't want those truths. But that is the truth, Barcelona. The moment you accept that, which is what I have done, I had to sit down and say, you know what? I've messed up. I made wrong choices. Now it is the time for me to make right choices for the better future. And that was even 20 years ago. I got saved 30 years ago, but 20 years ago, I made that decision. I said, I cannot continue to live like this. I had to make a decision. I had even to leave the church where I used to be because I felt this is what God wanted me to do. And then I am standing here today and then because of that grace. Can I give you this one? You don't create your future. You create your daily habits. And your daily habits, they create the future. Did you hear that, Barcelona? Did you hear that? You don't create your future, you create your daily habits. And your daily habits, they create the future. Praise the name of Jesus. Let me give you some few scriptures and we'll allow the scripture to speak for itself this morning. In Tandaman Tuleganji, because and Nami this year, I, I want to be intentional. You know, sometimes jumpa jumpa, no grasa, no chuluga. People sometimes have a goose or kubos, but when I look chuluga, we just need to be quiet and, and, and teach these people. As a matter of fact, when you go to a university, there's no lecturer who says, hey, hallelujah. The lecturers are, are so quiet <laughs> teaching people. It's only in the house of the Lord, the lecturers in the house of the Lord are screaming. I don't know how, why, I don't know. Now I just saw other lecturers who taught me and then I followed into this. So excuse me for the past 20 years that I have done this. I told you I just got saved, Shoy. <laughs> Here is the fact. Jeremiah 29, it is the fact, Bazaron. It is the truth. In verse 11, this is what we love quoting. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and future. That is according to Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Praise God for this verse, Barcelona. But this verse does not mean God is going to do everything for us. I don't have time for you, but go back to verse 1 and check why God said this. He was expecting them to build the nation. He was expecting them, you know, to build, you know, and prosper where they were at that particular time, using their own hands, creating the world that they wanted. And thereafter, God says, you know what? I've got plans for you, plans to prosper you, plans to give you a bright future, okay? But there is something that you need to do yourself. And then he goes on in the book of Isaiah 43 from verse 1. He says, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, Jacob, he who formed you, you know, do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by my name or by name. You are mine 
And then verse 2 says, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burnt. The flames will not set you ablaze. I want you to, to see something here. As much as God says, I have created you, I have formed you, do not fear, I have redeemed you, I have summoned you by name. Listen what he says. He says, when you pass through, you know, the waters, it is not God who's going to pass through the waters on your behalf. Are you with me? It is not God who's going to pass through the water on your behalf. It is you. As much as he says, I'm going to pro prosper you, he's still expecting you to do what, Basalwane? To create your own life. To create your own path. To walk through the valleys. To walk through the waters. To walk through the fires of life. You know, sometimes we claim these verses and we say, he is my God, he's going to prosper me. We don't even expect, we don't even take a responsibility to build our lives. We pray and then we take a back seat and say, I'm waiting upon God to do this thing. I am here this morning to declare that God is still expecting you, you know, to use your own hands and your brain to create the life that you want for the betterment of your life and the next generation. one. <laughs> Now, here is the main verse this morning. First Chronicles chapter 4. Somebody who had a revelation of this. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to verse 10. It's the story that we all know, the story of Jabez. The Bible says, now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. I want you to underline that. He was more honorable than his brothers. And his mother called him Jabez. You know, saying, because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the, on the God of Israel, saying, oh, that you would bless me indeed and enlarge my territory, that your hand, you know, would be with me and that you would keep me from evil, that I may not cause pain. And the Bible says, so God granted him what he requested. I want you to note something here that the Bible says he was more honorable than his brothers. That is an opening of that verse, that Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. You know, it actually says to us, you know, he was, he was born in the same family with his brothers. Same environment, same circumstances, same poverty. Probably they were born in Africa, you know, same circumstances and all that situation was the same. But the opening of that verse, it says, Jabez was more honorable than his brothers. And then when you look at his name as well, Jabez simply means a pain. It actually tells you that the environment, you know, of the life of this young man was not good at all. He was born in a terrible environment to a point that his name means pain. You know, when his father or his mother looked at him, they, you know, addressed him as pain. Can you imagine? Hey, you pain, come here. Hey, you pain, go to a shop. You know, can you imagine at school, they were calling him pain. I don't know the reason behind why he was, you know, called pain. Probably the father left when he was about to be born. I don't know. Or maybe, you know, and then the mother was raped when he looked at him, reminded of the pain. I don't know the, the, the full story. Even the commentary does not give us the background. But all that we know is that this young man was born in an environment that was not conducive for everybody. But it sounds as if his own brothers accepted their environment. That is why the Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brother. That simply means he has done something, you know, you know, about his circumstances, about his situation. He created something in his life that his brothers did not do. And this is what I want to talk about. Because it is not about your background. It is not about, you know, the apartheid that you have experienced in life. I mean, as I just said, Dubai has been under oppression for over 150 years. You know, they just celebrated the independence for 50 years. But look what they have done. Because they decided that we're not just going to mourn about the apartheid. We're not going to mourn about oppression. But we are just going to create a better life for ourselves. Maybe you are sitting here this morning. You people have not treated you well. You know, you have faced many challenges. Listen to me. You can be honorable this morning. You can be honorable than your sisters and your brothers. You can be more honorable than your peers. Based on what you do this morning, in 2020, you can change your life, you can change your circumstances by the decisions and the choices you make today. Amen. And that's what I want to pray for. 
And that's what I declare over your life. New corner puzzle one. You need to create your future. Now, let us look at some few qualities this morning of creating your future based on this scripture. This is what I've observed. This is what I've picked up while I was preparing this. Is this a good stuff, Bazalwana? Is this a good stuff? You may miss what I'm, I'm saying here, but please don't miss my heart. Grab my heart. Number one, if you want to create the future, you need to visualize the future you want. You need to visualize the future you want. Hope Restoration Ministries, Bambale Statement, it is not on your notes, but write this one down. Your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. Oh, there you go. Your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. You see, when Jabez says, enlarge my territory, bless me, O God, it tells me that he saw a blessing somewhere. It tells me that he was exposed to people who were blessed of God. When he says, enlarge my territory, it is because he was exposed to a bigger territory. He started visualizing a bigger territory. He started visualizing a better future to a point that he went to God and said, God, would you please enlarge my territory? Once again, I want to declare to you, your feet will never take you where your mind has never been. You need to visualize you need to see your future. You cannot create something that you have never seen. The problem of an African child is that we don't have dreams. Even the dreams that we have is just a dream for myself and my children and my dogs. You look at the leadership that we have in this nation. They don't have a dream, even if you can ask them, what is your plan? What is your plan about the future? Did I offend anybody? Oh, I think there's a responsibility somewhere. But anyway, I'm expecting that to happen this year. Praise the name. But they are just looking after somebody. What I'm saying is that we even struggle with the leadership. You can even ask some of the guys and say, what is your plan about South Africa for the next 10 years? For the next 15 years. Some other guys, they don't have an idea at all. They don't have an idea. Because we don't visualize. And you know what troubles me? Is that people, they even visit these countries. But they come back, they continue with corruption. They see, they, they go for holidays. They don't even do holidays in this country. You don't even trust what you have built. You can't even have a holiday in your own country. Because you know you're not going to have an electricity in December. So you run away. I'd rather, have, I'd rather have Christmas somewhere because I don't trust what I've built here. Praise the name of Jesus. I told you I just got saved. But what I'm saying, it begins with you. It begins with you. Forget about the government. Look at your own life. Look at your own life. Have you ever visualized what type of a future have you created in your mind? Because if you have not created a future in your mind, your feet will never take you there. Listen to me as you begin this year in 2020. You know, visualize, create a picture. Even if you have to, 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 to get the magazine, you know, pick up some, some, some pictures, put them on the wall. At least you are, you are visualizing your, 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 your future. And that's going to inspire you to use your hands to create what God has put in the inside of you. So this young man says, Lord, enlarge my territory. It is my prayer that may the good God enlarge your territory, enlarge your thinking this year. This is my prayer, Brother Juan. May the good God enlarge your thinking. To those of you who are in business, don't just depend on tenders. Don't just depend on somebody to give you a tender. Enlarge your thinking. 
Be an entrepreneur. Create things for yourself. Do a business. You don't just depend on someone to give you a tender because if they stop a tender, you are doomed. Most of South Africans, they are not business people. You understand? They just depend on somebody to give them a tender. Umabai tati tender kufalegile. Create your own thing. Create your own thing. Create your own business. Something that will make people to, to run after you, to beg you. Because they can just take it and give it to somebody else if you don't give them it is. Because you have not created something. You call number one. May the good God enlarge your thinking. May the good God enlarge your vision. May the good God enlarge your territory. May the good God enlarge even your influence. May the good God enlarge you in every area of your life. Number two, these are the qualities of building a future, of creating a future. Number two, create a blueprint of your future. It is not enough just to have a vision of visualizing your vision, but you need to create a blueprint of your future. Write down and articulate your future. Write down and articulate what, Bazalwane? Your future. The Bible says in the book of Habakkuk, write down this vision and clearly inscribe it on tablets so that a herald may run with it. What is a herald? A herald is the runner, the one who runs with the vision. He says, write it down on tablets. Write it down and articulate it. You know, write it down, articulate your vision. You write it and you speak about it. You speak about it. Have a blueprint of what you want to achieve. Bring it to the Lord in prayer. That's what the scripture, bring it, that's what the scripture says. You know, put God in charge of your work. Then what you have planned will take place. So you take your plans and then you hand them over to the Lord. But you are the one who must put them on writing. And you bring them to the Lord. Most of us, we go to God and say, God bless me. God prosper me. And the Lord says, in which area we don't even have an idea. Go to God first, put it down. And say, this is what I want to achieve. This is what I want to do for you. This is what I want to accomplish in 2020. Don't just begin this year without a plan. Write it down. Young person, write it down. And bring it to the Lord and say, Father God, here is my prayer. Here is my plan. Here is my blueprint. I need your favor. And God will honor what you have put down because you took time and you jotted down those things and you begin to speak about it. Am I helping somebody this morning? And let me tell you, when we continue doing that, I strongly believe that God is going to bless our plans and is going to prosper us in that area. We can't just keep on waiting and believe in God for a miracle. The land we will continue praying for people. But it is my intentions this year that when you come and you ask for your blessing and prosperity, I'm going to ask you right here on this platform, where is your plan? I understand you want me to pray for prosperity. Where is your plan? And what have you done the past three weeks you asking God to give you a best job. What have you done? Is the CV in place? Because Christians, they don't ask these things. We can't go by and people, they end up making a joke of that. They go, fire. Fire. Because they realize that I equal in double. So, you know what they do, Basalwane? They take those things and they make a song out of it. And they make money. They even make money because we gave them the script and then we gave them the lyrics and they go, Shakaraba, fire. And then you know what? We go and then we buy the very same song because we don't think we don't apply. At least he has taken a script from somewhere and he made a song and now he's making money. He created something. Well, if that's going to make you to think and remember, I'm good about that. In the name of Jesus. Here is number three. Here is number three. We may not finish this one because we need to speak a blessing over you. Add value to yourself. Do you want to create a future? You need to add value to yourself. 
How you see yourself or how you see your future begins with how you see yourself. Upgrade your life and invest in yourself. You see, when the Bible says Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, it simply says he has added value in his life. He had something that his brothers did not have. Come on. When, when they say you are honorable, forget about the parliament, forget about the honorable members, but we are talking about the honorable member uh, 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 Uchabes. It says he was more honorable than his brothers. That simply means born in the same family, eating the same food, they are in the same environment, but he had something in him that his brothers did not have. Listen to me. If you are going to have a brighter future, if you are going to have a better life, you need to add value in your life. You need to be rare. When we are saying you are a person of value, we are saying you are rare. You know, because rare things are very expensive and rare things are on demand than common things. That is why he says it was more honorable than his brothers. We don't even know the names of his brothers. Because if you are just an ordinary thing, you're not going to be known. But if you are more honorable, you have added value in your life, you will be known, you will be on demand because you have added value. What is it that will make other people to employ you, not this other person? Unfortunately, over the years, we just thought it's going to be a prayer and fasting. Give me this job. They want to give you that job, but you have a skill for that job. They want to give you that job, but you have a skill for that job. So when you read the book by Sunday, Adelaide says this was the biggest mistake we have done in Africa. We taught people how to fast and pray but we never encourage them to increase their values, to increase their skills. They cannot compete with other nations as much as those nations cannot compete with us in the area of deliverance. We are very good in casting demons, very good in casting demons and all these other things but we are still on the third world country. You look at the country that is called Norway. It only has a 2% of Christians and they only spend one hour on Sunday in a service. But they've built that nation. It's a first world country. And you've got people in Africa. Gushawama 6 to 6 now. Six to six. A stadium. Ukalo ngo six and tambam. Guzo glo puma ngo six six said. Monday to Monday, and we never told our people that after prayer you must use your hand because you built your life with your hands. And we go to a prophet. Bless me, Papa. Go deeper. Go deeper. Go deeper, Papa. Go deeper. There's no God deeper that's going to better your life. There's no God deeper. It's only one man who's just going to collect your offering and buy a jet and buy big houses and you are still remaining in the same place. You are going nowhere. If you, wanna, if you want to build your life, if you want to build your life, if you want to build your life, use your hands, use your brains. Young people, you open here. Stop making babies. We are very good at that. We are very good at that, making babies left, right, and center, depending on the ground of the government. While other kids right there, at the age of 17, he came up with a Facebook idea. Make that up. 17 years, he came up with a, face, a Facebook, you know, an idea. Today, here we are. We are communicating because a teenager said, I wanted to solve the problem. He created something. Our children in Africa, they don't create something, they create babies. 
Ungati juju iti amen. Funa masenza ma resolutions today, Bazalon. Sibes kuluma ma trenis. We can't keep on playing games with you. Can't keep on keep playing games with you. I'm even challenging the pastors who are collecting an offering here. Tell people that the, the hand of the Lord will bless them. But at the same time, they need to go work hard. Let us not deceive people. We come and collect an offering here. We say the Lord wants to bless you. The Lord will give you power and wisdom to go and acquire wealth. There's no tablet that's going to perform a miracle in your life here. God is still expecting you to use your brain and to use your hands. In the name of Jesus. Be proactive, not reactive. That is the next point. Be proactive, not reactive. Take action by causing change and not only reacting to change when it happens. I love that. Did you hear that, Bazalwan? You take action by causing change and not only reacting to change when it happens. You become reactive. This year, if you want to see your future coming to pass, be reactive. Initiate things. Create things. Are you with me, child of God? That is what the Bible says about this young man. Jabez called on, on the God of Israel. You know what he did when he was in this environment, when things were not happening? He did not nest that circumstance. He did not nest that environment. The Bible says he called on the God of Israel. He was proactive. He never nest. He never entertained the problem. He called on the God of Israel. And I love this. He did not call to any God, but to the God of Israel. Because he knew that this God can move the mountains. He knew that this God can separate the sea. But he had to do something about his situation. Do something about your environment. Don't settle in that. Refuse to fall into the same trap. Refuse to be beaten by the things that, you know, has troubled your family. Refuse. Make sure you become proactive. And the last one here, you need to align yourself to the will of God. Align yourself to the will of God this year. If you want to see your future coming to pass, align yourself to the will of God. This young man says, let your hand be upon me. He was saying, Lord, I want to align myself to your will. And when you read Job 32 verse 8, it says, there is a spirit in man and the breath of the Almighty gives him understanding. Oh, I love that, Masalwa. I don't have time for that. But there's a spirit in man. And the breath of the Almighty, which is God, gives him understanding. You need to align your spirit to the Almighty so that you can have an understanding in building your future. Listen to me as you begin this year. Begin this year by aligning your spirit to God Almighty. That is how you're going to build your future. And the final one, focus on what really matters to you. Do you want to build and create a better future? This is how you create a better future. You focus on what really matters to you. Listen to this. Get into the habit of asking yourself, does this support the life I'm trying to create? Can we take a minute on this one, Bazala? Get into the habit of asking yourself, whatever I do, the friendships that I have, the friends that I have, does this support what I want to create? Are these type of friends that I should keep? And not only that, roll it down, roll it down. Is this TV program adding value to my life or not? Caesar, look at you, spending, spending time watching Utatako. Utatako. Eh? What is this other crazy program? Eh? Date my family. 
and he's spending time on this. And now you even find Christians, they want to, to do the same thing, date my family. We, 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 we don't get marriage like that, my girl. We don't date my family in the house of the Lord. We don't do that. But because now the world is doing it, now, now you want to date my family. And you look at the, the family, look at the family. It's not even family, it's just three friends. <laughs> and they're calling that a family. And then these guys, they're going to decide and give this boy a blessing to say, you know, you can, you can date her. Three friends. And when you look at them, they don't even have an idea. They can't even define the very same friends. Abanai. But I realize I'm missing that. Praise the name of Jesus. And the question is, what type of books are you reading? What types of books are you reading? Because some of the books, they are still miseducating you. They are still miseducating you. And here you are, you are reading this book, but it does not take you anywhere. You need to select what you read. There are people that you can even trust. Johnson, has, he wrote a beautiful book that you can even get, How to Run the Race. There are many books in the, in the bookshop. At least you know these people. But the problem, the way we are so damaged as Africans, we can't even trust our own. As Hope Restoration Ministries, we can't even trust one another. I want to challenge you this morning. If you are going to build your future, there are things that you must confront and get into the habit of asking yourself, does this support the life I'm trying to create? Does this church support the life that I'm trying to create? This program, even in the house of the Lord, let me tell you, Bazaron, if we don't support the life that you are trying to create, get another church. I don't want to waste your time this year. If, if we are not here to build your life, get another place. Because I want you to become better for the sake of the people. Was that good, Bandara Come on, stand on your feet. Praise the name of Jesus Christ.